are at a wastewater treatment plant where we're going to talk about micropollutants. We're going to talk about this topic with Dr. Nora Sutton, Assistant Professor in Environmental Technology. So, Nora, why are we talking about micropollutants? Thanks for the question, Ilse. Micropollutants are chemical compounds found in very low concentrations in the water cycle. And even at these low concentrations, they can threaten human and environmental health. In some countries, micropollutants are called emerging contaminants or contaminants of emerging concern. And this highlights that this is a really new topic in the water cycle. So micropollutants are chemical compounds found in water, but what kind of compounds should I think of? Micropollutants include a whole range of chemical compounds. They're the pharmaceuticals, so the medications you take and excrete. They also include the compounds in your personal care products. So that's like the soaps and fragrances that are present in your body wash, in your shampoo, and your detergents. Micropollutants also include hormones, either natural or synthetic hormones that are excreted. And finally, micropollutants include a whole range of compounds used in veterinary and agricultural practices. So those are, for example, veterinary pharmaceuticals used on domesticated animals, as well as pesticides used on agricultural land. Wow, that's a very extensive list of compounds. Why do they all fall under this category of micropollutants? Micropollutants are compounds present at very low concentrations in the water cycle. A lot of these compounds we couldn't until recently even measure, uh, indicating that to some extent this was a hidden challenge for the water cycle. It's only with new analytical techniques that we can measure all the different micropollutants in different portions of the water cycle. But if these compounds are present at such low concentrations, why do we actually care about them? We care about micropollutants in the water cycle for two main reasons. The first is an environmental perspective. Micropollutants can have, even at a very low concentration, an effect on the ecology of an environmental system. A very commonly known example is the feminization of fish due to exposure of hormones. The second reason that we care about micropollutants in the water cycle is because of drinking water production. Drinking water is normally produced from very clean sources, so pristine lakes or groundwater, and the presence of low concentrations of micropollutants in the water cycle can threaten these clean drinking water sources. So in order to protect the environment and our drinking water sources, we should think about the micropollutants that we release into the wastewater. But what can we actually do to ensure a clean water cycle? It's important to understand the sources and the behavior of micropollutants in order to understand how they can accumulate in the water cycle. There's a variety of different sources of micropollutants. Uh, one source is someplace like this wastewater treatment plant. This wastewater treatment plant is made to remove the bulk of contaminants present in, water, in the wastewater, but it's not made to remove micropollutants. That means that the wastewater effluent that's released into the environment here contains low concentrations of micropollutants and is therefore a point source of contaminants for the environment. On the other hand, uh, there's also non-point source or diffuse sources of micropollutants. That's especially in agriculture, so the veterinary pharmaceuticals present in manure uh, or pesticides applied to agricultural land are all released diffusely into the environment uh, and those compounds can then infiltrate into groundwater or wash into surface water uh, and thus they enter the environment simultaneously at different locations and we call that a non-point source of micropollutants. But how do we know whether they accumulate? To know if a micropollutant accumulates, it's important to understand the behavior of that micropollutant. Each micropollutant, so each chemical compound, has its own set of chemical, physical and biological properties and that determines how it behaves in the environment. For example, some compounds are hydrophobic, that means they easily absorb onto soil, on the other hand, there's some compounds that are hydrophilic. That means they dissolve easily in water and are then transported with the water cycle. Uh, another example of a behavior of a micropollutant is degradability. So how easily the chemical structure of a compound is broken. Some compounds uh, can be biodegraded by bacteria or be photodegraded by UV light. And therefore, those compounds can easily be removed from the water cycle under the right conditions. Thus, in order to protect our water cycle, it's important to know the sources of micropollutants as well as their behavior in the environment. But let's assume we know the sources and we know their behavior. What then? 
Well, of course, Ilza, there's no silver bullet to remove micropollutants from the entire water cycle. That means that we have to implement context-specific mitigation strategies that really efficiently and effectively remove compounds at specific portions of the water cycle. This can mean, for example, implementing regulations that restrict the use of certain compounds, or, for example, convincing doctors not to prescribe certain pharmaceuticals because of their accumulation. Uh, another option is implementing wastewater treatment technologies. So, for example, at this wastewater treatment plant, you could implement an additional technology to remove the micropollutants from the wastewater effluent before releasing the effluent into the environment. For all of these uh, uh, mitigation strategies, it's really important to consider uh, the efficiency of that mitigation strategy and especially the stakeholders involved in order to co-create in a safe water cycle. Thanks, Nora, for this introduction to micropollutants. Now I understand that these are chemical compounds that are present in the water cycle in very low concentrations. And that it's very important to know both their sources as well as their behavior in the environment to implement effective mitigation strategies that can ensure a clean water cycle. So, now you've heard this. Have you thought about how your activities release micropollutants in the water cycle? And what can you do to realize a cleaner water cycle?